Hello, and welcome back to the video series for Introduction to the Art of Programming Using Scala. In this video, we're continuing our look at command line and how you can use the command line to get things done. In particular, we're going to look at remote access. One of the uh, great strengths of the Linux environment is the fact that you can easily log in to other machines and work on other machines. So uh, a lot of times you will wind up using uh, or there will be a machine sitting someplace, no one's sitting there, but you actually have multiple people using it simultaneously. And so the way that we do this is you need to use remote access. So you're, you're logging in from your current machine to some other machine and doing stuff with it. So we're going to go back here to our Linux Mint install, and I'm going to pull up a terminal. I'm actually going to do it a little differently than we've done it in the past. I'm just going to right click and say open in terminal. Something to note here when this pops up, I am not in my root directory, I am in the desktop. So I'm going to do a CD so that I can go up to, to my main directory. There are lots of ways of doing uh, direct access. The book talks about a number of them. We're going to focus on the ones that you're most likely to use. In fact, that's two commands in particular. The first command is called SSH, and that stands for Secure Shell. And what that allows you to do is it allows you to log in to another machine and start working on the command line there. Uh, and it's secure in that all communication between the two machines is encrypted uh, using public key cryptography. Now, a lot of modern systems will not allow you to log in on them using techniques other than SSH. Uh, for example, in the past you could have used Telnet or RSH to connect to other machines. Most systems now will restrict you to SSH simply for the reason of security, that you should not have communication between you and the other machine happening over an, a non-secured link. So in order to get SSH to work, you have to give it at least one argument. And the argument is the name of the machine that you want to log into, name or IP address, the identifier for your machine. In my case, I'm going to go to a machine that's called Bianca, uh, that's at the, in the Trinity University Computer Science Department. Ask your professor or instructor about machines. You might have other, if you have another machine in your house that's running Linux, uh, for example, I, I do and I could go to a, an IP address for that machine instead. But I want to show you how I could log into Bianca and how that would work. So if I just type this in, it asks me for a password. Now there's something significant to note here. This is asking me for the password of student at bianca.cs.train.edu. Well, student is not my username. So it turns out that I can't log in in this way. So it'll ask me a password. I don't know the password. There is no password for student at bianca.cs.train.edu. So I have to tell it that I want to log in on Bianca but I have to tell it that I want to log in as my username, and my username happens to be M. Lewis. So you probably have your own username for computers that you might use on uh, that are departmental or campus-based machines, in which case you give that username and an at sign and the machine that you're going to log into. And now when I hit enter, it says that I need to give it the password for my username on that machine and I can do that and I'm logged in and you'll see here once again I have a prompt just like I've had a prompt before it's a slightly different prompt and all of the commands that we're used to using uh, will work here okay, so I can move around I can do the things that that you're used to doing on this machine um, there is one thing that I can't do at this point though, and that is to run a program that is going to pop up a window. So for example, gedit is a graphical editor uh, that's on many Linux boxes, but it has to pop up a window. And as you can see here, it says that it cannot open the display because this is actually running the window on the other computer, supposed to be sending it through the internet and popping it up over here. But when I did the SSH command, I didn't give it permission to do that. So I'm going to exit out from that, and then I'll use the up arrow to get back that command. If I want to be able to 
have windows come across, I need to give it the a either a hyphen capital X or a hyphen capital Y. You can go into the man pages and read the distinction. I typically use the hyphen capital Y. And once again, I have to type in my password. But now when I type in gedit, I don't get the error. I actually get a window popping up. And so this is a program that is running on another computer uh, several miles away from me. Um, and you can you know, see that I can type on it, but it is a little bit lagged. And so uh, you don't want to do anything that needs a really good response rate if you are going to do it in this, in this uh, way. It depends upon the, the speed of your internet connection. So for example, my students who would all be on campus, if because they're all on campus, the campus internet is, is fast, uh, and especially of the, the uh, intranet, the network from one part of campus to another, is, is fast. If I were to open windows from the uh, machine that's upstairs in my house, I would be going through only the local network and it would be a lot faster depending upon how far away you're logging in and how, what speed the connections are, this may or may not work well for you. Um, so that covers most of SSH. One thing that I guess is also worth pointing out is you can also follow this with a command that you want to run on the far machine. Since I'm not popping up a window, I don't need the hyphen capital Y. And here you go. So this ran ls, but notice I'm back on my machine. It didn't leave me on the other machine. It just ran a command over on that machine and then gave back control. So you, you can do that. You'll probably do that a lot less than you use SSH to just remote log in to that other machine. The other command that can be useful to use is called SCP and this stands for secure copy. So it's very much like the CP command that we looked at previously. However, it will work with remote machines and it does secure communication. So it encrypts everything that it's, is sent back and forth. And just like CP, you need to give it two file names, the file that you want to copy and then where it's supposed to go, uh, which could be a directory or, or a specific file names because you can also change the name while you're copying. In this case, though, typically if you're going to use SCP, one of them should be on a different machine. Uh, and now it turns out SCP will work just fine on the same machine, uh, just like CP would. But you can specify a file that's on a different machine. So for example, if I wanted to copy a file from my account on Bianca, I would start it off same way we did before. I need to say that I am copying something from mlewis at bianca.cs.train.edu and then I give it a colon for the name. Now by default that um, this is going to copy from my home directory. So I could list any file that's in my home directory right here without giving any path information. There's one file that I thought might be nice to pull down and potentially look at. Uh, that is not in my home directory. It is in a different directory. This is an, an output file from a, a large simulation. Um, and after I've specified that file, then I say where I want it to go. Well, I want it to copy in the current directory, dot. So I hit enter on this. It asks me for, for my password again. I type it in. And you can see here that it is copying it. As I said, this is a is a uh, reasonably large file that we're pulling or that I'm pulling down here. Um, so SCP, what tells it that the file is on the other machine really is this colon in here. If you don't have a colon, it assumes that whatever you are putting in there is the name of a local file uh, or a local directory. By putting the colon in there, you say that the stuff before the colon is a specifier for a machine, possibly a user and machine, and the stuff after the colon is, is a, a path for a file or directory that is on that remote machine. Um, 
I do occasionally run an SCP and leave out the colon and it just winds up doing a local copy for me. Uh, also, you can have it, if you want, you can copy local files to a destination. So we could have done SCP and given it some local file first and then had the M. Lewis at Bianca colon whatever as the second argument. Technically, you could even have it go for uh, two different remote machines. Um, but that's an unusual usage. So now we have that file. You can see that file was 102 megabytes. Uh, if we do our ls, here is that file. Um, and I can review the use of less to go through and look at this. This is just a, a large output from, uh, from a numerical simulation, but it gives us a big file that we can play with with uh, some of our uh, future work. So uh, that's it for the uh, remote access. Um, those are the primary commands that you'll use for doing stuff, SSH to log in remotely, and SCP to copy files around. Um, you should play with this, uh, especially if you have local machines, for example, on your campus that you are going to be using uh, for doing your work. Um, just ask your instructor what machines you should use and if there are any special machines that you should be logging into. Uh, that's it for now. We'll see you again soon.